Hi, I'm Adolf Oliver, and this is a video clip on AC product factoring. Now, of course, what we've been factoring here are quadratic equations, and quadratic equations, of course, have a squared term, and if the variable's x, then we can always write them in this general form, ax squared plus bx plus c. The a, b, and c just stand for the coefficients, a to coefficient x squared, b to coefficient x, c to plane number at the end. Now, as we've recent, recently talked about here, uh, if the leading coefficient, the a here, is a nice plus 1, then reverse FOIL can be used. And reverse FOIL is a lot more direct and simpler, so we always want to use that when we can. But if this is not plus 1, if you have something else there, then there's more interaction going on, and you have to use some kind of factoring method like this AC product factoring. Now again, the folks have thought up lots of different versions of ways of tackling these more complicated quadratics. Uh, and if you've got one that, uh, you know, you know how to make work, that's fine. But I like this AC product because it makes use of many of the reverse foil things and it finishes up with factor by grouping, which is something we know already. Well, let's uh, give you a beginning example here on uh, how this works. Here we are. We got 5x squared plus 39x minus 8. There's no GCF. We always look for that first, so we're uh, stuck with the numbers that we have here. And uh, notice that the uh, coefficient in front of the x squared term here is not a nice plus 1. So that means that what we've got to use <coughs> is the AC product method to do it. Okay, well, when we talk about AC product here, let me remind you that here's the A we're talking about, and here's the C. Product, of course, means multiplying them. So what we're really going to do is multiply the A and the C together. So that's the first thing we're going to do in this problem that we're looking at right here. Okay. 5 in front has got to multiply the 8 and back. Now, we don't have to worry about the signs at the moment. We're going to get those with our method in a little while. But 5 times 8 gives me 40. And so 40 now is the number that we're going to be playing our two-number game with, very much like we did with the reverse foil. Here it goes. I want two numbers multiplied together give me 40. The next thing I look at is a sign in front of the 8 here. Since it's negative, that means difference. If it was positive, we'd put sum. So I want two numbers multiplied together to give me 40, whose difference is 39. Well, that's quite a big difference between them. And, uh, oh, this is a real simple one to see. You might have figured this out already. What two numbers multiply together to give you 40, whose difference is 39? How about 1 and 40? Isn't 1 times 40 equal to 40, and the difference between 1 and 40 is 39? Okay, so here's our winning combination of numbers. Now, what happens is, that doesn't give us the answer directly like we got with reverse FOIL. What we have to do now is use this to go a couple more steps. Okay, well, what are we going to do? We're going to split the center term into the two rainbows that it came from. These, in fact, are winning numbers here, 1 and 40, are the ones that are going to allow us to do this. Now, remember, that minus in front of the 8 here in the end meant the signs that we uh, are going to be getting in our binomials here, or that we use, are going to be one of each. Okay, and what I mean by that, well, 1's plus, 1's minus, or 1's minus, and 1's plus. So, uh, one of each type of sign. Okay, well, which one of these guys is minus and which is plus? It's real easy to tell. You play that bigger game that I told you about. 40 is definitely bigger than 1. So, the bigger guy has to have the sign of the center term, which is positive here. Always easy if you remember the little things to look for to uh, factor these guys. Okay, here we go then. Uh, the 1 and the 40 are the two numbers I'm putting down here. Uh, we can put them in any order. 
Uh, I'll just do 1 and 40 in the order I have here. So remember, the 40 goes with the plus, so the 1 has to go with the minus. <clears throat> so I'm going to write here minus 1. Notice our variable's x. Okay, and then the 40, of course, has a plus in front of it. <clears throat> so plus 40x. Now notice that if we combine these two guys together, we do indeed get plus 39x. That always has to be true. But <clears throat> the other thing is we're going to find out in a little while that these are actually the correct rainbows. We are, in effect, unmultiplying this guy to get back at what we started with. Okay, bring down the last term and the first term exactly as they are. The only one we split was the center term, and we used our winning numbers over here. Now notice, we've got four terms here, okay, and four terms we can factor with factor by grouping. So remember how that goes? You take the first two together, and you take the last two together. So here we go. Now, <clears throat> if you did factor by grouping on some other original problem someplace, it might or might not work, depending on whether the... Uh, original problem was factorable or not. But here, since we got winning numbers over here, if we haven't made any mistakes, then factor by grouping is guaranteed to work here. Well, okay, let's remember how we do it. We take a look at the first two terms, say, okay, what is the GCF? Looks like it's only an X. So if I factor the X out of the first two, Let's see, what do I have to multiply x by to make this guy again? Looks like 5x. I'm figuring out the leftovers here. And then what do I have to multiply x by to get negative 1x? Well, just negative 1. Now, here's the key. This 5x minus 1 <coughs> better show up in this second group of 2 over here. But, of course, how do we get it to show up? What we have to do is factor out a GCF. Notice that 8 will divide into both of these. Now... We'll always have the option of factoring out the plus version of the 8 or the minus version. And only one of those works. And so uh, instead of just guessing, and then if you guess the wrong one, have to erase, uh, you can tell very easily which one is correct by making a comparison here. See this 5x? It's got to come from this first guy up here. So officially, this is a plus 5 inside here, and this is plus up here, so the signs are the same. Okay, the second guy's got to come from the second guy. Well, minus to minus, they match. They're the same. So the signs are the same, going first to first and second to second. If they're the same, we don't need to change uh, anything in what we're factoring out here. If they're the same, we factor the plus version. If they would have been opposite, we'd factor the minus version. But this is how we can tell right to begin with, which is correct. Okay, well, now what I'm going to do is say, let's see, it was the 8, of course, that was the uh, GCF here. So now let's get the leftovers. What do you have to multiply plus 8 by to make plus 40? Well, 5x. You could put the plus in front if you wanted or leave it off like I did. What do you have to multiply plus 8 by to make it negative 8? Well, negative 1. So just as we said would happen, notice this. The two quantities here are like. That means we can go ahead and factor this guy once more. Factor out the GCF. Here it is. 5x minus 1. Okay, and then turn around and do the leftovers. So they make up the second binomial. Well, uh, what's left in the first guy when we remove the 5x minus 1? Just x. And here, plus 8. So x plus 8. Now... The claim is, is that this guy is the factorization of our original problem. And, of course, how do you test that to make sure it's true? You multiply back. So let's do that with FOIL right now. Okay, here we go. Remember, the F stands for multiplying the two first. 5x times x is 5x squared. Okay, then the L stands for multiplying the two last. Minus 1 times plus 8 is negative 8. And then we do the two rainbows. Here they come. Remember, the big rainbow is the O in FOIL, the outside product. 
and we multiply to get it the things on the end of the rainbow. Well, we got plus 5x times plus 8. Looks like it's plus 40x. Huh? Then the i is the inside product. That's the little rainbow. Negative 1 times x. Well, that's just negative 1x. Well, these are like terms, so we can combine them together. Minus 1x plus 40x gives me plus 39x. Ah, uh, well, you can see that's exactly what we had up on top here. Let me scoot this up so you can see this. There it is. Okay. Now, here's the real point I wanted to make on this. You see the two rainbows we got here, minus 1x and plus 40x? Have you ever seen those anywhere else in this? Here it is, minus 1x and plus 40x. So you can see that when we do the AC product method and split the center term here, what we're really doing is breaking that center term up into the two original rainbows. And if you went and multiplied it back, those are exactly the guys you'd get to combine for the center term here. So as usual, what we're doing to factor any of these quadratics is we're unmultiplying them, which folks call factoring officially, and uh, it gets it back to the original binomials here that you multiply together to get that. Now, of course, why are we doing all of this? So we're going to be able to solve quadratic equations. They're the second most common after linear equations and everyday type of problems. Those will be coming up down the line here a little bit. But now it's time for us to get a little more practice uh, in uh, the AC product method. So you can see a little better here how to be able to work with it. So uh, here we are. Here's the beginning problem. <coughs> Negative 5p squared minus 8p plus 21. Now, there's no GCF, 5, 8, and 21. But this minus in front here means that all the rules we just learned are all backwards. Ah, we don't want to go there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor out that minus sign. And by doing that, the first term then becomes positive 5p squared. Factor the minus out of the center guy. We got to factor it out of all of them. That becomes plus 8p. Factor it out of the plus 21 means it becomes minus 21. Now, <clears throat> always double check this to make sure you got it right. If we distributed this minus back in, I'd get this plus 5p becoming negative 5p squared here like it is. The plus 8p would be negative 8p and the minus 21, we'd have to change this sign become plus 21. So we are indeed correct here. But now we've got all the signs and everything set up so the regular rules for factoring the AC product are going to work for us. Okay, well, here we go. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do, we don't have any more GCF we can pull out. So the name reminds us what we do first. We turn around and multiply the 5 and the 21 together. And what's that give us? Uh, I think 105, huh? Okay. So now we got 105 here. <clears throat> now, we want two numbers. Remember, as we play the two number game here, we want two numbers multiply together, give me 105. The minus here reminds me I want the difference of those numbers to be 8. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, we want two numbers multiply together, give me 105 who are 8 apart. Um, let's see, 10 times something won't work. How about 15? Uh, let's see, 15 times, let, let's try this. 15 and 7, and see if this works. Okay, well, 15 times 7, uh, 5 times 7 is 35, carry the 3, 1 times 7 is 7, and 3 makes 10. Ah. And is the difference of these 8? It is 2. So there we go. That's our winning combination. You just have to try different pairings and multiply together to give you this guy and see if you hit one that works. Okay, so 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to use this guy to split the center term. So here it goes. Remember, that's always the key here of doing the AC product. After you find the winning numbers, you use them to split the center term. But notice the sign here on our last uh, term in the trinomial, the plain number, is negative, and the only way you get a negative is multiplying a plus and a minus, so I usually say signs are one of each. And anytime you have the one of each situation, then your winning numbers, one has to be positive and one has to be negative, so how do you tell which is which? You play my bigger game. 15 is bigger than 7, so the 15 has to have the sign that matches the center term. There it is right there, so the 15 will be positive. Okay, now by the way, let's remember that what we're really splitting here is not this original guy. It's the guy that we factored here. And of course, we have this GCF, the minus, which we will have to uh, put in the answer when we finish. So let's try not to forget that. Okay, so the 15 has to go with a plus. I'll just write it first since it's on the left here. So plus 15, and we happen to have the letter P. The 7 in has to have the other sign, which is minus. So minus 7P. Now, double check this. Plus 15P minus 7P does indeed give you plus 8P. So it doesn't look like we've made any mistakes so far. Okay, the next thing is bringing the first and last guys down exactly like they are. Okay, here you go minus 21. So once again, you split the center term using the winning combination, then bring the first and last guys down exactly like they are, and now, of course, we finish it up with the grouping process. So here we go. The GCF in the first two here is 5P. So we factor that out. What are we left with here? Looks like P plus 3. Now, you distribute this back in, you better get what we started with. Uh, looks like there's a 7 that's the GCF over here. I think you can see what sign we're going to get out, but let's just officially talk about this. This first guy is going to come from this first guy, so plus to minus, the signs are opposite. The second guy here, the plus 3, is going to come from the negative 21, so the signs are opposite there. So if your signs are opposite, that means you factor out the minus version of your GCF, so minus 7, and when we do that, we just need a P to begin with here, and it looks like plus 3, negative 7 times P, negative 7 P, negative 7 times plus 3, negative 21, we're good. Okay, here we go, we're ready to do the last step. We have the common P plus 3, so we factor that out, here it is, and the leftovers make up the second binomial here, 5p minus 7. Okay, that's our factorization. If you were to FOIL this in, you'd get this guy. But of course, we want the original problem. So remember the GCF up here? We said we better not forget. It can be a sign just like this. Bring it down. This minus is part of the answer. So if you were checking this, I'd FOIL these two guys. And then when you got that answer, turn around and apply to minus, which would change all the signs, and boom, there you are. That's what you'd have. Okay, <clears throat> let's go on to another one down here and uh, see what we can learn from it. Okay, uh, it's a quadratic. We got a squared term here, and we got everything in order. Uh, oh, I was hoping I could pull out a GCF of 3, but 3 doesn't divide into 56. So uh, what we have here, or what you see, is what we've got. So since we don't have a nice plus 1 in front of the A squared, we've got to use the AC product method. So here we are. Multiply the 9 and the 56. What's 56 times 9? I don't know. Let's get a little space up here and multiply it out. Uh, 56 times 9, okay, uh, 6 times 9 is 54, carry the 5, 5 times 9 is 45, and 5 makes 50, so it looks like our uh, two number, uh, uh, that we're going to try the two number business on here, is 504, 
Okay. So here's how it goes. What I want here is I want to have two numbers now, okay, that multiply together to give me 504. The minus sign in front of the 56 then reminds me it's difference I want, not sum, but difference. If this was a plus, then we'd be looking at sum. It's 3. Well, it's often difficult when you have a large number and you want to break it up into two separate numbers here that are only a small bit apart like this. And uh, there's a little trick here that works with this. So let me remind you again. We got somebody large, and we have a small difference we want between the two numbers. The trick is, take the square root of this 504. Now, you can get your calculator out. You can pause for a moment and do that. Key in 504 and hit the square root button. And uh, what you end up getting here when you do that, uh, I'm just rounding it to one place, something like 22.4. Now, why'd I do this? Well, if I took 22.4 times 22.4, it'd be 504 within the rounding error here. And uh, so these would be two numbers that are exactly the same that multiply together to give me this 504. Well, I don't want two numbers exactly. I want two numbers that are uh, three apart. So I could try one higher than this and two lower. That would give me three. Or I could go two higher and one lower. One of those combinations is probably going to work. So here's the first thing we do. Take this and, of course, say uh, round it. It's basically 22. Remember, we're looking for whole numbers here for this to work. And uh, since this ends in a 4, I'm going to go to begin with and try the plus 2 this way. And then I have to go minus 1 this way. Now, when I do that, these guys will then be 3 apart, just like we required here. So, uh, let's see, what have I got here? 24. Okay. And uh, what have I got then uh, here? Uh, let's see. 22, 21. Okay, remember, I'm taking 22 and adding 2 to it to get 24. And I'm taking 22 and subtracting 1. Now, what if we multiply these together? What are we going to get? 1 times 4 is 4. Well, I get 24 here. 2 times 24 is 48. Uh, 4, 0. Hey, this is looking real good. These guys do multiply together to give me 504, and they are three apart, aren't they? So there are lots of nice little tricks like this in math that, if you know them, they help you out along the line and allow you to come up with answers easier. Here was the idea again. We wanted two numbers multiplied together, gave us this big guy, but they weren't that different. They're pretty close. Well, if I took the square root of 504... Then this would give me two numbers exactly the same to multiply together to give me this. So round this guy and then try, you know, since we want to be three apart, try one above and two below, or two above and one below. And one of those is probably going to work, and we got lucky and picked the uh, correct one to begin with, but there it is. So here we go. We found out by this method the two magic numbers, 24 and 21. Now, checking the sign of the last term again, uh, it's negative, so that means, as we often have, not always, but often, the signs are going to be one of each. Well, we're going to use that, of course, to split the center term here, and uh, I'll just take them in order again. Either way will work. Uh, 24 is the bigger, so remember, we have to play the bigger game, so that means... The 24 has to go with the minus sign. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to write minus 24, and we got the letter A. Here we go. And then the uh, 21 has to be the other sign, which is going to be positive. So positive 21A. Once again, combining these, we get negative 3A. So it doesn't look like we've made any mistakes here. Now, bring down the last guy exactly like he is. Bring down the first guy exactly like he is. And then what we do is, of course, we finish this up 
in factor by grouping. If you do a number of these guys, you'll get practice up good and just remember the steps uh, to be able to get uh, through it. None of the steps are particularly hard. Just have to remember what you do first, what you do second, and so on. Let's see, what's our GCF here? 3 will divide into both 9 and 24. And we got an A, so I think it's 3A. And uh, what's the leftovers going to be when we factor 3A out of 9A squared? I think it's going to be what? 3A again. 3A times 3A does give you 9A squared, so that looks good. Then we got a minus sign. And I think we only have to multiply by 8 here huh? to get this. 3A times 8 is going to be 24A. And, of course, we add the minus sign. Okay. Well, this guy right here is going to show up in the second one as long as we haven't made any mistakes here. Let's see. What's the uh, GCF here? Uh, 7 will go in the 21. Uh, seven, yeah, 7 goes in the 56 eight times, so we're good there. Now, notice the signs. Plus to plus, they match. Minus to minus, they match. So, again, if the signs match, then you factor out the plus version. So, here we go. Plus 7. That's going to leave me here at 3A and then minus 8, which is exactly where we are. Okay, that looks good. So, factor out that common 3A minus 8. Here it is. Put the leftovers in the second binomial, 3a plus 7. Okay. Check to see if there was a GCF that we pulled out. Nah, no GCF. So there we are. If you turned around and took these two guys, and again, sorry about that. Let me scoot it up a little bit here so you can see that final result. Uh, but there it is. Okay. Well, we just about got it. Let's take a look at a couple more of these, and then I think you guys should be set to uh, do factor by grouping types of problems. So uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, here's the first guy we're going to look at on this last page. And uh, let's see. We got a minus in front. We're going to factor that out. Remember, we can't leave the minus. It causes all the rules to be backwards, and that'll drive you nuts. It uh, doesn't look like there's a number in the GCF, but notice the V's go all the way through. So we can factor a V out. So factor out a minus, a V, and then put the leftovers in here. This is what we're going to try and factor with the AC method. Let's see. Uh, this will be 8V squared. Okay. If I'm a factor of minus V out of this, we'll have, what, plus 31V? Now, we'll check this in a moment here just to make sure we're right. And then the last guy, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to multiply by just, I think, negative 4. Huh? Okay, let's check to this. Anytime you do a GCF here, always double check it. Minus, and this is officially a minus 1 here. Minus 1 times 8 is negative 8, and V times V squared is V cubed. Looking good so far. Minus 1 times plus 31, negative 31. V times V, V squared, and then minus V times minus 4, minus times minus gives me plus, and we'll have 4V. Okay, there we are. Now remember, this GCF is part of our final answer, so let's not forget it when we uh, get finished here. But in the meantime, we got to do the AC product business, so here we go. Uh, let's see, the A and the C multiplying each other, 4 times 8 is 32. So there is my uh, uh, number here, multiplying A times C, that I'm going to play the two number game with. And so I want two numbers multiplied together to give me 32. Now again, we look at the sign of the last term here, it's minus. So that reminds me that we want the difference of these numbers to be 31. Huh, well, that difference is almost the whole thing here, so usually what you try then is just one times the number, which I think is going to work for us here. 1 times 32 is 32, and the difference between 1 and 32, 31. Well, that was easy. Always love it when we can come up with the winning combination here so quick. Now, as again, as it's often the case, not always, but often, the minus on the last term here means our signs of one of each. So one of these guys is going to be positive and one negative. 
Okay, well, remember, we played a bigger game. 32 is the bigger guy. He has to have the sign of the center term, which is positive. So the 32 will be positive. The 1 will be negative. Now, of course, what are we going to do here? We're going to split the center term. I'll just take them in order again. So remember, the 32 is a positive guy. So the 1 is the negative guy, and it's V that we have here. The 32 now is a positive guy, as we've been saying here. Here he is. Now, if you combine these together, negative 1V and positive 32V, you do get plus 31. So that's a split, but we also know this is the correct rainbows. Again, copy the last guy and the first guy down exactly like they are here. Minus 4 and then the plus 8V squared. You could put the plus in front if you wanted. Now, factor by grouping here is guaranteed to work for us. So here we go. Grab them two and two. Well, let's see. What's the GCF in the first two here? Looks like it's just a V. What are the leftovers going to be? Well, 8V minus 1. Hmm? Multiply this back. I do get 8V squared, and I do get negative 1V. Okay. GCF here is 4 between these guys. And we got to figure out whether we're going to factor plus 4 or minus 4. Compare the signs. First to first, plus to plus, they match. Compare the seconds. Minus to minus, they match. So since the signs match going across here, that means we factor out the plus version. If the signs were opposite, we would have factored out the minus. That's just a nice way of getting it correct without having to write anything down. Okay, so anyway, here we figured plus was what we were doing, and the GCF was 4. So I factor plus 4 out of plus 32V, and we get, of course, 8V. And let's see, what do I have to multiply the plus 4 by to make it look like negative 4? I think just negative 1. So plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, we're almost there. Here we go. We got the common 8V, and I See if I can scoot this up a little bit so I can write it all down here. Here comes 8V minus 1, and the leftovers go on the second guy, V plus 4. But now remember, before you leave the problem, always go back and see if there was a GCF you pulled out. And uh, notice there certainly was. All the way back up here, we factored out a negative V. So that is definitely part of the answer. It has to be included here. So if you were multiplying this out to check it, I would multiply the two uh, binomials together using FOIL, get that answer, and then use distributive law to take the minus V and multiply that through. And once you did that, you'd get the same guy we started with all the way back up here. Okay, well now, uh, yeah, one more to look at here. Here we go. Once again, we don't have a nice plus 1 in front of the x squared, so we can't use reverse FOIL. we got to use AC product. And uh, let's see, we can't, there's nothing common here. 5 doesn't divide into 46, and the x's don't go all the way through. So this is exactly what we got here. So, okay, let's make the AC product. That reminds you what you do first. 5 times 40 gives me 200. Okay, now, next thing, of course, is we play the two-number game with 200. Uh, notice we got a plus here now, so that means we want the sum of the two numbers to be 46. Okay, well, how do you multiply a couple things together and get 200 and get yourself close to 46? Yeah. I think the, how about 40 times 5, huh? Now, 40 times 5 is 200, but what's the sum of 40 and 5? Not 46, okay? And there's no other two combination you can do here to get 200 and have the sum be 46. So, this is what happens when you get something that you can't factor, uh, nothing here will work. You can keep trying other things. This is the closest we got here. So since nothing works, 
then that means we don't have a winning combination. We can't split or factor it. So this one here, not factorable, okay? What we'd have to do is just write it down. The answer remains the way it is originally. We can't do any more with it. Okay, well, the AC product method again. The individual steps are not difficult. Uh, the thing, of course, is you need enough practice to remember what to do first, what to do second. But uh, remember, it does make use of many of the methods that uh, we've learned already.